Hi, this is Russ from Escape Design Studios, and today I'm going to show you how to create a mold cradle for your sculpture. Okay, as you can see, we're cutting burlap strips first. Um, I've measured these out five inches apart, um, and I believe this is a two-yard piece of fabric. Um, we're just gonna—you don't have to cut uh, cut these things to be five inches. Um, you can make them any size you want. Five just happens to be my preference; um, gives you a decent amount of coverage. And as you can see, I'm going through and I'm measuring uh, another five inches so I have a five inch square. Um, when you're done cutting these, there's going to be some excess left over, and those excess pieces will be just as useful as the patches themselves. As you can see, I created uh, more patches than I'm going to need, and these are those uh, scrap pieces I was telling you about. Okay, so um, now we're going to go ahead and take some saran wrap and we're going to go and uh, we're going to place that over the sculpture, being extremely careful as not to push too hard on the sculpture, but get the, uh, to get the saran wrap to stick. We're going to cover um, the entire area in which we plan on uh, creating the cradle um, with this uh, saran wrap. And, uh, and essentially the saran wrap is a protective layer against the second layer, which will be... Uh, uh, water-based clay. The whole point of, of a cradle is to create a casing that will protect your sculpture um, from its own weight and um, any kind of surface that it's laying on. Right here I've decided to kind of have a little belt against, uh, you know, homemade tools versus store-bought tools. And as you can see, the tool I'm using right now is actually a store-bought tool. It's a piece of wire on two wooden dowels uh, for a handle. Um, it's kind of hard to create a straight slab. Let me take some practice. So um, I actually created this tool out of a piece of scrap wood and some baling wire. And it gave me a guide so that I each and every time I cut a slab of clay, it's the uniform thickness. Um, so it, it's up to you. Um, sometimes homemade tools are better because you've got to custom, you've got to customize to exactly what you want. Okay, so now we're going to lay the clay slabs over top of the saran wrap and make sure not to push too hard. This clay here, this water-based clay, is going to work as a uh, is going to work as a cushion barrier between the third layer, um, the plaster, and the, uh, the initial uh, sculpture. You want to make sure you don't get any of this clay on your sculpture because it does dry, you know, um, in the air, and uh, the last thing you want to do is pick off these hard bits off of your sculpture and then have to redo some detail in an area. Mold making is uh, incredibly um, repetitious. The last thing you want to do is create more repetition by going back and doing detail work. Um, so uh, just keep it um, on the saran wrap. And as you can see, I'm actually going around some of the more intricate parts, uh, some of the more, uh, I guess you would call hazardous parts, uh, the ears. Um, there's no interior form. Um, essentially, they're there to, uh, they're, they're freestanding. They don't have an uh, armature underneath to protect it, so they would definitely, you know, um, fall under the pressure and under the weight of the sculpture. So now we've gotten to the mixing process. The general rule of thumb, as you can see, is two to one. Uh, two parts uh, Ultra Cal 30 to one part water. But you can pretty much eyeball this, and uh, as long as it looks like a milkshake, then you're pretty much good to go. And what we're going to do is we're going to take those uh, burlap uh, patches in the plaster and create plaster bandages. 
I don't suggest using uh, plaster uh, bandages, uh, the same material that you would typically use for life casting. Um, they usually run about $40 a case um, and you're going to need several cases um, to, to make them strong enough uh, to actually you know, work on the surface. We're actually overlapping these bandages to make sure that um, they, the, the piece is completely locked together and we're making certain to stay only on the, uh, the water-based clay portions. Um, you don't want this stuff getting on your, on your sculpture. Uh, again, it's the same reason why you don't want the, uh, the water-based clay on the sculpture. You don't want to go back and do detail work that you've already done. Um, and essentially we're creating a case around this area and the sculpture will actually lean back into this uh, so that we can, um, we can actually start uh, creating the mold walls um, and the case lines. And as you can see, it's uh, nice and uh, stabilized. It's all dry, hardened, and ready to go. So if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, send me a message and I'll try to help you out.